What's up guys and gals, my name is Splattercat and we are here at the Nerd Castle playing Warhammer 40k Space Marine. Which in the previous episode, we had actually not in the previous episode, we had basically just navigated some really nasty sewers. They were full of explosive pipes and also some explosive squigs. Basically everything exploded down there. I don't know if they were just naturally imbued with the power of Chipotle sauce, but they were all ready to go. I mean, every single thing down there had the end function of a visit to Chipotle for dinner, for me anyways. What could the orcs hope to gain by slaughtering so many? So terror demoralized the militia. Cruel, but effective. This was no strategy of war. For orcs, this was sport. Yep, the boys don't need a reason to put down the Daka. That's just the way that it goes. Orcs fight because it's fun to them. Slaughtering things is just the coolest thing on earth. It's like playing with your favorite toy, in essence. And we just fell. I didn't even know that I could fall off. That's the first time I've ever seen the game let me fall off something. Amazing! Looks like we've got a mashed up statue for the machine cult or something over here. I bet that screen's gonna turn on. Watch. Millions more of them. Our plan is unchanged. Get the Inquisitor and the power source off world. Titus, if they take over the Manufactorum, we will have a damnable time getting them out. We are ultramarines. Orcs are not a problem. If we had a week, perhaps. But by then, the Orcs will have worked out how to dismantle the Titans. As I was saying, it appears as though the orcs have gone for a strategy of escal- Ooh, a LAS cannon! Yeah, we're taking the LAS cannon. The Astartes man portable LAS cannon fires a charged energy blast along as powerful laser can cut through almost any armor. Ooh, extreme range. Features a powerful optical sc Oh, it's a sniper rifle, okay. So we zoom there, cycle zoom, okay. So let's go ahead and test this bad boy out before I need to use it later. Okay, so we can do a little bit of the zoom in, and that means we have two snipey weapons with us right now, which is kind of a strange situation to be in. I suppose I'm not saddened about that. I do enjoy sniping every now and again. Whoa! Orc rocket launchers on the high ground. doesn't appear to instantly vape- Oh god, please don't shoot me with rockets! You forgive me as I take a moment of silence to make sure that my shots ring true with the power of the Emperor. There's one right there, and this is kind of the same exercise that we've already done with the Stalker Bolter, albeit with a less hilarious name. I really like the fact that it's called a Stalker Bolter. That makes me happy in so many different ways. Because the comedic opportunities are literally just flowing from that gun. I guess figuratively flowing. Never mind. Not literally. People use literally wrong a lot nowadays, and I've noticed that I've become one of them, and it saddens me. A single structure undamaged. Or unblooded. Now that we've done a fair bit of sniping, I see some blinking over here, which makes me think there's probably a servo skull. Or maybe just a hallway with a blinky light. What the hell do I know? <laughs> Never mind. Can I go up this right here? Oh, I can't. I thought that was going to be the way to our next location. Unfortunately, I'm going to have a look around because I think we're at the point now where I stopped looking for servo skulls. And I want to keep an eye out for them because I'm one of those collector people. I am what's wrong with gaming. I heard somebody say that one time that they're like, these weird autistic collection quests are everything that's wrong with video games. And I'm like, yeah, I'm one of those people that's just like, ooh, this goes in the bag. Yes, let's count how many we have in the bag. Oh, we've counted. Okay, there's five in the bag. Definitely five in the bag right now. I've put five things in the bag, and now I can continue collecting. Like, I am one of those people that I just compulsively need to collect things. Report to Lord Sharp. The Fabricator General of Gryia shares my vision for the power source. Today, he offered up the Titan Manufactorum to test the device's capabilities. There is a risk that the power source may overload and destroy the entire facility, but it is an acceptable risk, and the tech priest does not need to know. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's funny. I'm surprised you showed up. There's no one here. Then where else to go? Workers, assemble. People are saying the Skitari are dead. I think people are. The increase in worker absences has been noted. Delinquent workers will be disciplined. Okay. What are we gonna do? The Skitari sound like just a terrible race of aliens that just like gets around on skis and won't stop playing Atari. That's what it reminds me of. That's what my mental image was. It was just like this thing with a backpack on skis, and the backpack has like the suspended thing over the top of its head so it has a TV in front of its face while it's skiing. Basically, it's skiing designed for me. Like, I don't really like snow sports. Not a, I'm actually not really a fan of going outside either. That in general, if I have my choice. Pro I'm gonna execute. You guys said I could execute a Gretchen, and I'm gonna do it. Hold on, where are- no, come here, let me bitch slap you so that I can execute you, Gretchen. Hey. None of that right now. You stop that. Right this second. I will not have your red rocket flying at me in any- and the rocket is red. The reason- okay, let's talk about that. So in lore, one of my favorite things about orcish lore is if you're talking about orky things, you'll notice that orcs tend to paint things different colors. And those different colors correspond to different things. So for example, things that are purple they think are sneakier, or things that are red, they think are faster, and in fact, because I told you earlier, as orcs they have this kind of telekinetic power, I'm sorry, they have this psychic power that they don't even know about, it's an energy field that connects all orcs, if a large group of orcs believes in something hard enough, it will actually come to pass, and so in fact what does end up happening is that if orcs paint something purple, it's faster. And if they paint, I'm sorry, they paint it purple, it is indeed sneakier. In fact, there can be an orc dressed in full purple in the middle of a forest who will be absolutely invisible to everybody around him just because he believes that he's invisible as long as he's wearing purple. And the same thing goes for red. So if you see an orcish car that's painted red, it's because it goes faster. The orcs believe hard enough that red things go faster. And so when they paint something red, they notice a performance increase, which then further bolsters their own belief that red things go faster. Now, orcs... <laughs> Looks like we have a lot of DACA coming in. Hold on, let's make sure that we don't have any- oh my god. Ow. Well then. I'm gonna go ahead and let's trigger- yeah, let's do that right now before something terrible happens. And I'm gonna try and fire through my own lines, which is usually a pretty bad idea. But I'm still gonna attempt it. And that guy right there looks very, very grumpy. He's quite a bit larger than the rest of the orcs, and that makes me nervous. I'm gonna try and get some armor back here. Get him first. Got him. Glitch a couple of them through the wall. I guess it's not a glitch. You could fire through that orifice. And if there's one thing I know about orifices, or orify, I don't even know what the plural, I think it's orifices. If there's one thing I know about orifices, it's that they're great at firing things. Snot, anything else really gross you can think about. Probably pretty good at being fired from an orifice. I was trying to move while... There we go. Move to a better... Really? He took one straight to the... Well, then. That's a tough orc. That is an orc that is forged from steel. But then again, I guess all orcs are kind of forged from steel. They're pretty tough. Orcs keep on trucking no matter what you do to them. I think it's called the Gestalt Field. That's what I remember. It's called the... Gest that's what the orc field is. I think it's called a... Like a liminal Gestalt Field or something. And it's weird that I remember something so specific. Which leads me to believe that it's probably wrong. What gun am I wielding right now? Oh, I've got my pistol out. I'm gonna allow those guys to tank since I don't have any aggro right now. Oh no. Yeah, I definitely don't need that. And let's get started with some killing here. We're also gonna trigger a rage right there to keep ourselves alive because... Frankly, I'm not doing a very good job at fighting anybody here. And we've done a fatality to get our health instantaneously back up to maximum. I'm gonna go through and chop up a few more of the boys over here. And down they go, and we're right back where we started. I don't seem to have a very good string of luck when it comes to getting my health back up to full. We just kind of hang out at half health all the time. Our blood, or I'm sorry, the blood of our enemy, that could be our blood to be honest with how much damage we just took. But in any case, someone's blood is all over our armor. And that leads me to believe that I probably should not lick it off. If I knew it was my blood, then we could probably get away with doing something badass like, yeah, like licking your knife or whatever. But if it's someone else's blood, I, HIV is a real thing, you know, and we just kind of have to avoid space HIV because I bet grimdark HIV is way worse than normal HIV. Oh my god, how many grenades and stuff can we have to deal with here? Let's see if we can put a nade on all of them. And if I'm good at throwing, what I like about the grenades in this game is that they are very wieldable. 
some games grenades are incredibly unwieldy, which is weird. Because at least where I grew up, everybody knew how to throw a baseball fairly well, which leads me to believe you could throw a grenade pretty well too. I guess you're in the heat of combat, so I can't judge. I've never been in the heat of combat, but some games grenades are just wonky and I don't like the way that they work. I'm gonna try and execute one of these lads over here. Oh, and they all appear to be stuck. And so I'm gonna take advantage of that situation and try and bring them down. I'm gonna stun him up. Maybe. Let's go ahead since our health is looking a little bit skimp. And fall back just momentarily and fire into the melee for a second. I'm gonna isolate one orc. And if I can get the stun off, I think we'll be okay. I do wish that there was like a block key or something so that I can make the melee a little bit more manageable. I'm gonna keep hip slapping you until- Look, you're just gonna get slapped all to hell and back until you- <sighs> Until Leandros or somebody else kills you. Never mind. I guess my teammates aren't really concerned about my health situation. They don't really mind. They're like, hey, go ahead and die. We don't really care. I get a promotion if you die. You get the stalker bolter out because these little close quarters areas, it's almost a little bit- well, I mean, the first thing you think when you play a shooter is not pull out the sniper rifle when you get into close quarters, but the nice thing about the stalker bolter is it can be hip-fired so efficiently that you can just go for over and over headshots. That's what I used to do in PvP in this game, too, when I used to play other players, is that, honestly, you can get away with it, so why not do it if you can do it? Another servo skull for the Emperor! Benjamin, plans have changed. Hannah hasn't returned. I think they're going to close off that whole stratum. I have to get to her. You'll be back from the food depot before we are. Tell your mother where I am when she arrives. If and you both are of injured, you, return stay to there. your quarters. Pack up the food the as best you can. Reports are you. that the orcs have already reached the manufacturer. We'll need to leave as soon as we're together. I'll be home soon. I'd never let a man close another man's stratum. You just don't mess with another man's stratum. Them's fighting words right there. Oh, something bad's about to happen in here. I don't remember pulling out my Vengeance Launcher, and as far as I can tell, just a second ago, he was holding... Nope, where's the Stalker Bolter? We are in a long-range situation here. Give my Stalker Bolter back. We have, like, a sincere issue here that we really need to remedy with hot steel. We got one guy left. Eh, I'll aim low. Whatever. We'll blow his Orc Balls off. And while, to quote Cartman, shooting somebody there is probably not the coolest thing to do. He tried to get us with a surprise rocket right there. There's a knob coming, so I'm going to try and put some rounds on the knob. Since he's going to be our principal concern. Everybody else is hanging back, and orcs are notoriously bad at aiming. Dodged another rocket. I saw that one at just the right moment. Once we're out of stalker bolter ammunition, we'll start using... Oh, there's two. There's another knob up there, too. We'll detonate some explosives, put a few more rounds on you. And, oh my, they have a lot of ordnance coming in at us. And, as you can see, as I become more panicked, my shots become less and less... Well, never mind, it's because... We have no ammo. Okay. And the last cannon seems to have done it, so that works. I will take that result. It reduced him to absolutely nothing. He got blown to oblivion and back, and unfortunately, there won't be any Daedric Heart to crush there. Did I get him? That's a horrible question to have to ask yourself in the middle of combat. Did I get him? You should just be like, yes, I got him. Something in the universe should just let you know that he's already been handled so that you don't have to con like concern yourself with it any further. I think we've gotten everybody. Let me go check and make sure that there's not an ammo crate around here somewhere, because I do think we're going to need it. Some nades there. We can make use of those if things get ugly. We've got things looking nice and green here, which makes me happy, because I love the salamanders. The salamanders' color is green. If you don't know anything about the salamanders, essentially they're guys with really... It depends. So, in certain genres, they just look like they're African or something like that. It depends which Games Workshop edition you're at. But the salamanders, there's two different versions. Either their skin is, like, pitch black, as in they're, like, the color of coal, and then they have, like, glowing eyes. And so they have, like, kind of a demonic look. But then the other version, and I think this is the... Uh, I don't know if which one came first, but the other version that you'll find from Games Workshop is that they just kind of look like they're African or they're of Nubian descent of some sort. So in any case, I really do like the Salamanders based on their lore. They're the blacksmiths of the Imperium, and essentially they're in charge of, like, maintaining armor and, like, inventing new things, and they're pretty badass. 
God, that was not a soft landing. I was in a car accident once at like 55 miles an hour, and that is the worst feeling. If you guys, oh my god. So what they don't tell you, and what nobody prepares you for when you're in an accident at that speed, is that, oh, they came up behind me. That's quite sneaky of you. I'm gonna give myself some minor defilade, so I was distracted by the fact that there was a drop pod off in front of us. I'm gonna go ahead and just do a fury right now to make sure that I don't die because I don't want to feel foolish I do wish I could break my fury off earlier so what was I talking about oh yeah I was talking about my car crash and so nobody got hurt just so you know like it was just kind of a really really high speed fender bender like everybody walked away perfectly fine I was a passenger at the time but anyways so in a high speed impact what they don't tell you is that all of your guts like inside of you actually like shift and bounce off of your rib cage and oh my god it hurts so much that's the one thing I remember about it. it's not like getting whiplash or feeling like my neck hurt or anything like that it was the feeling of like my intestines bouncing off of my rib cage and like my heart moving inside of my body it was a really really uncomfortable feeling to the extent that I really I don't have very good memory but I still remember it to this day it was really really uncomfortable and it lasted for like 25 minutes as luck would have it your guts really don't like being thrown against your ribcage they try they try to avoid that if they can oh are you serious right now get on out of here get on out of here we'll have to bring all of these structures down and rebuild this time on top of a mass grave i don't think it's so bad i don't see that many bodies Well, let's make for the monument. And if we can get there... That's way too far. You know we're gonna... There. Yeah, I see you, buddy. Got him. I really like the stalker bolter. Have I mentioned that so far? I think I've mentioned that. Even the sound it makes, that thwug, thwug. I really love the bolter sounds that THQ always used when they would design games. I was really not a fan of the bolter sounds that they used in, like, the Space Hulk game, for example. The bolter sounds were just like, eh... I almost wish, I bet there were, probably was some way that they could have licensed those sound effects from, I guess, the now defunct, deceased corpse of THQ. I don't think I'm actually making that shot right there. Got him. Very, very good. Let's continue towards that super awesome looking statue. I'm going to put one of those in my living room someday. And people, it's going to be a conversational piece, I think. They're going to be like, so what's up with this? Are you like... A Raelian, or like, what's going on here? If you don't know, Raelians are people that, well, never mind, you can Google it. Raelians, we did, I did a project on Raelians when I was in high school. It's a religion. Just so you know. I thought that was an orc, an especially stylish orc, but nope, it's just the Inquisitor. I was like, that one has a trench coat. Inquisitor Drogon, we need to get you off planet before we're overrun by orcs. You were exposed to the unshielded power source. In the generator room, I saw it. You held raw energy from the warp. How are you still alive? The power source conducts warp energies. The stuff of chaos. Heresy. My work against a Xenos has the Imperium's blessing. Can your blessed work help us against the Orcs? My research is of the utmost secrecy. The Imperium forbids its use without sanction. Consider that your Imperial sanction. Very well. The power source fuels an experimental weapon at my research facility, the Psychic Scourge. It could destroy the Orcs. You didn't think to bring up this Scourge weapon before. The Psychic Scourge has never been test-fired, Sergeant. If it malfunctions, it could crack this planet in half. We're out of options. We fire the weapon take our chances 
The psychic scourge is at the Calchis facility, my research laboratories. It is a fair distance. We will need transportation. Captain, we aren't far from the plaza where Lieutenant Mira was heading. The Imperial Guard rally point. They will have Valkyries. We can fly to the research facility. Let's find this Imperial Guard outpost. I was gonna say, if you were looking during the video, I find it really coincidental. And honestly, it's pretty... Positively coincidental that the captain got a scar just along his like his hair part So it doesn't mess up his hair like he can still have perfect hair, but he still gets a scar in his head, too That's a really that's kind of a beneficial thing. I mean you got to plan your scar patterns properly Nothing up in there dead Imperial Guardsman This is feeling remarkably space hulky And I'm so terrified of leaving behind one of the audio recordings that I keep just ducking into rooms randomly. Ah, well, we'll play a little bit more and then we'll break off this episode. This giant arena looking area makes me nervous. I bet they're going to come up over that overhang or something. But anyways, as I was saying with orcs, so for example, I was talking about this earlier on in the episode, so orcs gestalt field. Because they believe so hard, one of the things that's kind of unique is after you kill all the orcs, if you pick up orc technology after you kill them all, one of the funny things that happens is it just stops working. And so Imperial scientists have no idea how an orc jetpack works, for example. Like, they just can't get it to work. And by all mechanical and engineering sense, it shouldn't work, but in the hands of the orc, all of a sudden it's just like, pop, and it just it automatically works because he believes it will work. Which is just, like, amazing. That's why I enjoy the orcs, is because they're just so humorous. Everything about them is just goofy and just kind of like, they shouldn't be winning any- I thought somebody's gonna be firing a plasma gun at me. I saw that blue glow. And anybody that's familiar with Warhammer 40k sees a blue glow and it's just like, Oh, plasma gun, get down! Hit the deck! And just gets worried about it instantaneously. I hear psychotic laughter. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. It's kind of convenient that we came out like along their flank and not like into crossfire. Let's break out the LAS cannon and see what we can get done. And so one orc down. Did I hit that little pole instead? No, that got him right there. Okay. We are taking a lot of rockets right now. Having seen that there's a knob coming through the smoke at us. If only it was the first time I was in that situation. Reminds me of my days up in the big city. Hanging out on the corners. Knobs heading at me through the smoke. And that's right, the joke is going to get reused. I mean, you guys can't escape from it. The joke is going to be used over and over. Ad nauseum, really. If there was ever a time to use ad nauseum, this would be it. I can't believe we survived that. <laughs> Imperial Guard. Inquisitor, your wound is slowing us down. I can manage. Brothers, take him to the Valkyries. I will draw the orcs off and meet you there. Give the power source to the sergeant then, Captain. No, Drogo. The orc chieftain wanted the power source. When his orcs see I possess it, not you, they will follow me. Move out. <laughs> All right, so I was going to say... ...to the rally point, guardsman. Bastion Primus is that way, my lord. But it's all orc held territory. The really, like, sort of humorous thing about Imperial Guards is you heard it right there. They were like, Woo! We're alive. Like, they're excited. Just the fact that they're alive means that they're just like, All right! We made it through a battle! Yes! Maybe we'll get a promotion. And after I accumulate 80 to 90 promotions, I might not be expendable anymore! Yes! So anyways, my name is Splattercat, thank you for joining me here in the Nerdcastle for another episode of Warhammer 40k Space Marine. I look forward to seeing you all in the next episode. Take care out there everybody, hi do, and remember to always go WOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOO